So today we're, today we're going to start uh, using some JavaScript, which is the interactive language of the web. Uh, JavaScript is code that lets you retrieve information, process information, get user feedback, do something automatically. It's the interactive language of websites. If you recall from last week, what is one possible definition of CSS? What does CSS do or what's it about? CSS? You don't have to know what it stands for. What does it do? What is it, what is it used for? Creates yes. What's that? Creates a, Creates a website? Not quite. Yes. Style a website. Style a website? Yes. Uh, helps like color mm -hmm. and, um, That's it. Styling, coloring, sizing, alignment. So it's the styling of the website. Then we go back one level to that HTML. What does the HTML part of things do? That's the part that is the is the creation or the structuring of, of the website. So HTML structures your website and its content. CSS styles it so it looks nice. And then JavaScript is interactive. You press a button and something happens. That's in short. So what we're going to do is set ourselves up here. Let's create a brand new folder for today's work. If you've got a flash drive or on your desktop, you want to create a brand new folder. You can put today's date on it. So I'm going to create a new folder. 1909.16. So create a folder on your desktop or flash drive, call it today's date. And then we will start our code editing software. Just out of curiosity, at home, uh, how many of you are using uh, Visual Code, Visual Microsoft Visual Code as your coder? few people. Okay, how many of you are using uh, Adobe Brackets as your coder? Okay, uh, what about Notepad++? Uh, and what about Sublime? Okay, so there's a lot of varieties there. We're using in the class Brackets just because that's what's installed. Uh, so after you create your folder, go to your apps and launch Brackets. Let's start the Brackets app and I'll turn on the lights. This will be similar to last week where we started brackets and then we pointed it to the folder that we just created. So I'm going to go into brackets. You might get like a pop-up welcome thing. I'm just going to go to file close all on that. You want to skip this little template. It's just informational, so close that. And then I want to go to file open folder. I want to open the folder that I just created. My whole project is there. My HTML, my CSS, my JavaScript, my images, everything that my project is should be in that folder. So when you turn things in, it'll be safer for you to either upload every single file or zip it all up and turn that in. We mentioned that last time. So open the folder. And wherever you have your drive, wherever you have your folder, you're going to go to that. And open the folder. So on the left side, it just says, we've got your folder open. That's it. Nothing is, is open at the moment. No files, nowhere to type our code. So let's go to File New. And then File Save As. So what's a good name for our uh, starting point HTML file based on previous lessons and such? Last name and then dash index dot HTML. So whatever your last name is, dash index dot HTML. Don't forget the dot HTML part so that your code runs properly. And then here we're going to create a very basic HTML document first. So from our practice here, we have the doc type element, the HTML elements, head. Yes, I'm going to type it quick because I've been typing for like 25 years, so I might be a little fast. 
but go ahead and type this up here and then we'll type we'll write the new stuff in a moment this is all reminiscent of stuff you've already done before and I'm just gonna kind of browse breeze through it week four JavaScript so a way for you to do that ten lines of code Let me zoom in a little bit more that's our basic 10 lines. If you want to zoom in yourself, you can press Control on the keyboard, then plus and minus. That zooms you in. Sometimes it's better to zoom in. Control plus, Control minus. So go ahead and write those 10 lines, and then we'll do new stuff. You should all be familiar from previous lessons. Of course, if you have any trouble, let me know. Let us know. We'll catch you up. This is what we want as our starting point in each HTML file. So 10 lines of code right there. Uh, this is HTML. Um, when we did our lesson for CSS last time, we wrote some CSS in this document. But then the actual homework assignment, you needed to put your CSS in its own file. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to write JavaScript in the HTML file. But when you turn this in, at the end of the week, you're going to turn in a separate JavaScript file. So in the readings, I've noted in there, how do you make your JavaScript code in a separate file? So you'll need to do that for full credit. But to start off with the, uh, with the JavaScript in the HTML file, just to focus on one thing, uh, we need to, let's write a comment over here at the end of our code and say the following code is JavaScript. What follows will be JavaScript. The HTML file can include the CSS inside of it and the JavaScript, but it is better to have the CSS in its own file and the JavaScript in its own file. But for learning purposes, we'll all put it all together. And that means that we need a tag or an element called script. So everything inside this script tag, inside of the script block, will be JavaScript code. And we've seen the sort of syntax of HTML, and we've seen the syntax of CSS, and now we're going to see some new syntax for JavaScript. Before we write JavaScript, I'm going to make a couple more notes over here. I'm going to back up over here into the head area and say following code is CSS. What was the, what was the tag or the element that defined our uh, CSS inside of here? Style, yeah, so if we add the style. So everything inside of a style block is CSS code, and everything inside of a script block is JavaScript code, and anything else besides that is assumed to be HTML code. I want to write a comment 
up at the top in the style block to remind ourselves that the syntax is selector, curly braces, property, colon, value. Remember that? That was the, the basic the very basic syntax of what CSS looked like. You had some selector, curly brackets, you had a property like background color, colon, and then red, semicolon. That's in general how CSS looks. That's in general how you type CSS. That's the syntax. In a moment then we'll compare. What does the syntax, the basic syntax of um, of JavaScript look like and this will look different as well but all this all of these three separate languages come together to make a complete website the HTML for the structure and content the CSS for the design and then the JavaScript for interactivity so in the in the script in the JavaScript area I'll make a comment there as well and the base and the basic syntax here is object.method parenthesis semicolon and <clears throat> parameters. Okay, that looks different. There's no curly braces. There's a dot or a period in there. But JavaScript deals with objects and methods. What does that mean? Well, we'll get to that. Just like we got to what's a selector property or value, we'll get to what's an object, method, and parameter. But JavaScript will often be written in this sort of syntax and there will be differences also um, and JavaScript definitely is the one that this is the hardest one just you know honestly saying that HTML is easy CSS is a little less easy JavaScript is hard comparatively it is a different sort of syntax it is a different sort of concept JavaScript can read and write and change and create and destroy HTML and it can read and write and create and destroy CSS you can write some JavaScript to create a brand new h2 you can write JavaScript to read what was the message inside of h1 and then write JavaScript to change it so JavaScript is a dynamic language it changes the static document that we have there when I wrote h1 it's always h1 JavaScript but when I write JavaScript code it can read what's in there and change it and change the color and change the font size and everything it can even put it in a different place on screen so JavaScript can be pretty complex but here's an example that can get can kind of wrap our minds around next line after the comment this will be real JavaScript because what's in here is uh, is uh, is a comment let's say window dot alert and again as usual as you start typing perhaps you get some pop-ups that might help you explain what you're about to type window dot alert parentheses end of and then at the very end semicolon so usually when we have a JavaScript command we end the command with a semicolon at the end end of statement similar ish to the CSS there they kind of use it as an end or like a comma because we can have body background color is red and then semicolon and text color is yellow and font size is 12 but with JavaScript it's some object some method and then the end end of statement end of the command and I have over here in the parentheses quotes hello world it's common practice that when you learn a new language the first thing you make it do is say the message hello world that's been a tradition for decades when people learn any new language well, what's the way that I make it say to you hello world this is one possible way uh, the great thing about JavaScript is there's so many ways to do the same thing the bad thing about JavaScript is there's just so many d ways to do the same thing and which is right which is right they're all right they're all wrong it just depends what you needed to do what's the most what's the way that I understand the best what's the most elegant way what's the fastest way what's the whatever way whatever way you get your thing to do what you needed to do is the right way so I want to see this result remember our mantra write the code save the code run the code 
So let's save our code. We've already written code. Let's save our code. And now you can either double click on your HTML file to view it, or click the little uh, lightning bolt at the top right. So we wrote the code, we saved the code, let's run the code. What do you get when you run it? If it worked properly, you should get a pop-up that says, hello world. Anyone having any trouble? Did it not pop up and say that message? If it worked properly, we just wrote some code that made a pop-up and had a message, hello world. That's what this um, that's what this JavaScript command did. We said window.alert. We have the window object. Question? Need a little help? Okay. So window.alert is a way to make a pop-up because we're dealing with an object here. The object is the whole web browser window. And then we've got the specific method or command to do something, to make an alert. There's a built-in command that makes a basic pop-up. Then we have parameters. What do I want it to say in the, um, the pop-up? Hello world. So obviously, if you wanted it to say something else, inside of the quotes, you write something else. Something else. Not literally. But whatever you change in those parameters, it's still going to be a pop-up. It's going to pop up. It's going to say anything else. So that made a pop-up with a message. There's a lot of these built-in commands, a lot of these built-in methods. They do different things. And um, the thing about most languages is, again, you don't have to have them all memorized, every single command. You just need to know how to look up, I need to do this, so how do I do it? And then I do it. So let's say instead of making a pop-up that appears on top of my web browser window, I want to write something right in the actual document area. So we have next line document dot write so JavaScript is object oriented programming in in terms that there are various objects that we can manipulate there are various objects that we can create or uh, change in a variety of methods so the alert is the actual command, the write is the actual command, but where do we do it? That's the object. Window.alert and document.write. Well, this, uh, this looks similar to the previous in that we've got some object, some dot method, object dot method, and this one has a parameter. On this write, I'm going to add a parameter, quotes. I'll say this is JavaScript. All right, save it and run it, and see what happens when you write when you process this new JavaScript command. So when you run this, now this is going to change slightly based on the web browser. But in this one, I get the pop-up, and then I click OK, and then I see a message. This is JavaScript. So there's that so far. Chrome, when you run it via the little live preview thing, it automatically goes in Chrome. Because okay. I think some of the students aren't getting the pop-up. Is anybody not getting the pop-up? Is anyone not getting the pop-up? Try opening your code in Chrome. Right-click it and then open with Chrome and see if there's any difference. And if not, we'll check it out. But that should happen right there, that when you, um, 
when you've got those two commands, one was a pop-up, and then one was written right on the document. I'm going to go back and make a comment. JavaScript also has a different kind of comment. If you do a double slash like this, that's going to be a one-line comment instead of having to write both of the comment tags. And we can say here, translation, in the web browser window, make an alert window with text. So a couple of ways to write comments. If you start the comment and end the comment, everything in between is a comment. Or if you put a double slash at the beginning of the line, everything in that line is a comment. So be careful. If I don't put the double slash at the beginning, it thinks it's code. See how it didn't turn gray? I need, the, I need it to be gray. So what we're saying here is in the window, in the web browser window object, make an alert window or alert pop-up with the text that you wrote. This next one over here, in the main document of the page, write some text on screen. So again, JavaScript is a language that you would take in a class that lasts 8 to 16 weeks. We have classes here at Southwestern, CIS 165, for example, that lasts a whole semester. We're only going to do one week and one lesson of you know three and a half hours. So you're not going to become a pro at all. You're not going to learn every aspect. I'm going to say you're going to learn like 2% of JavaScript today. And you don't even actually need to know 100% of JavaScript. You might need to really only know like 50% or less. Because there's 100 commands, and you don't need to know them all all the time. How often do I need to make a pop-up? Maybe kind of often, so I might want to learn that. How often do I want to write something on screen? I might want to learn that. But then there's these other ones that you don't really maybe need to use too often. So maybe you learn it one time but not memorize it. And then later when you need to do something, I might look it up. How do I make it uh, create a random number? Well, I need to go look that up. There's a command for that. Basically, JavaScript is a language where they give you a lot of little pieces, like ingredients to something. You take those ingredients and make something bigger. Like if, you, if I tell you the ingredients, uh, eggs, milk, sugar, and flour, what can you do with that? You can make like a hundred different cookies, because then all you need to do is add a different uh, flavor, vanilla versus chocolate, uh, macadamia nuts, walnuts, out of those same ingredients, they're cookies, but then you add different things and you make something more. JavaScript is like that. They'll give you pieces. Here's the code to make a pop-up. Now combine it with something else. Here's the code to check the time. Well, it's going to check the time. What time of day is it? It'll say good morning versus good night. So it's all of these pieces that combine. Let's go on over here, and then we'll say, in the developer console, log or write a message. OK, we've got um, console.log. So some sort of object dot some sort of method. The method is the actual command, basically. And the object is where does this happen. Window.alert, you make a, an alert pop up on the whole window. Write on the document, document.write. You're going to write some text in the main document of the website. 
Okay, something about in the developer console, we're going to log a message. So we can say the message, I'm a coder. So here's a new place where I'm putting some output in the developer console. Developer, aka programmer. So save it and run it. And do you see where the message appears? This one's a trick question if you've never done JavaScript before. Because I'm gonna get the usual, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the pop-up. That one runs first. So the the browser processes the code up to this point and it stops and it does what it says make a pop-up hello world it's waiting for me I click OK then it continues document.write and it writes it in the main document and then it did the third command console.log but I don't see my message I'm a coder that's because we're not looking at the developer console once I activate the developer console there it is I'm a coder well, let me show you what I did here. Right now, in the browser, I'm looking at it as a person, as a regular web user, as a person that just visits a website. But every web, every web browser has a developer console, a special screen where you can see the code of the website, where you can test the code of the website. We just need to activate it. So I'm in Google Chrome, but all the browsers should have a version of this. If on the keyboard you press F12, If you press F12 on the keyboard, you'll get this brand new panel, which says elements. And this is all the code, all the HTML elements. And then I have console. And here's my message. I'm a coder. That's the, that's the code that I wrote there on line 28, in my case. There it is. Check it there. Press F12 in your browser, and you might need to change over to your console view. There's different views. You should see them. If you get this scary error message, just don't worry about that, about fail to load. But if you see I'm a coder, it worked. Uh, raise your hand. How many of you did see the I'm a coder in the console there? OK, great. Take your hand and pat yourself on the back. You are a hard, hardcore JavaScript coder. Anyone need a little help? Did it not work? Did you not see that message in the console? All right, so this console, like just for fun over here, I'm going to go, just to show you this, I'm going to go to Southwestern College's website. And then I'm going to press F12, and it opens up the, this console, and it shows me all of the code that this website is made out of. One of the ways that people learn a language is to see examples. Well, if I go look at anyone's website and go into developer mode, F12, I'll be able to see behind the scenes of a website and I might even see you know special secret console messages you know I think there's a special one over here actually I think Facebook has one if you go to Facebook console stop this is a browser feature intended for developers if someone told you to copy paste something here to enable a Facebook hack it's a scam and you're about to get hacked so this is a special screen that no one really accesses I think there was another one somewhere that I remember seeing. They actually drew a picture here in the console. Well, I'll look that up later. But anyway, this developer's console right here is, um, is one of the other places where I can see my results. Okay, let's continue a little bit more. Let's say, okay, actually, let's turn off these lines at the moment. I don't, I don't want to see that pop up over and over, so I'm going to comment it out. And I'm going to comment out the document right as well. I don't want to delete the code. I just want to deactivate it. So put a double slash in front of both of those. And when you change that, then you don't get the pop-up anymore. And you don't get the message there. So
So one usage of the comment is to deactivate code. I don't want it to pop up every time. It's a little annoying. So I'm just deactivating the code. What I want is this time, instead of it happening automatically, I want to have this trigger from a user saying, do something. This is all happening automatically. When the, when the code loads into the browser, it does every line, line by line, in sequence, on its own. But a lot of times, we want user feedback or user interaction. I want the person to press a button and then make a pop-up. So first, let's create a button. Let's create a button in the main body, an HTML button. So after the heading 1, we've got a tag or an element called button. And its purpose is to create a button and say, click me. So let's create a button. This is in the HTML area. It's not in the script. We're going to use JavaScript to make it do something. But at the moment, this is plain old content. It's part of the structure of the website. There's a button to click on. So this button will say, click me. And if I click on it, nothing happens, because I haven't written any JavaScript code yet to do anything. So this is when we get a little more complex. The previous code that I wrote happened automatically. And now this code will, this following code will happen after I trigger it. Before I um, can click on it, um, I need to make it active. So let's go back to where we wrote that button, and we're going to add an attribute. ID equals btn click me. So this ID uniquely identifies this button. This ID differentiates this button from every other button. So I might have 10 buttons on the screen, and they all need to be uniquely identified. So we have an ID attribute on this button. I could call it button 1, button 2, button 3, whatever. But I'm calling the unique ID of this button, btn click me. And this is something that we can make up ourselves. So I can call this kitty cat. This will work just fine. As long as I am consistent with what I'm doing here, when I write my own code, I'm inventing my own ID. I'm inventing my own sort of like label for this button. So I want to be able to click on this button to do something. This requires JavaScript to realize that this button exists. This requires then JavaScript to pay attention to when we click on it to do something. And then it requires JavaScript to actually do the something we want it to do. So three kind of ideas. JavaScript needs to pay attention to the button, that it exists. JavaScript needs to know when you've clicked on it. And then JavaScript needs to do something after you click on it. So in our JavaScript area, it will say JS will know about the button. We have some called a code called const constant. It's sort of like we're gonna constantly know that that button up there exists. We'll say el btn click me. I'll explain why in a moment. Equal to document dot. So we're sort of saying, let's constantly have in memory that we're going to pay attention that this button exists. And we're creating our own object now, um, this button. We've had objects already, the console object, 
the document object, the window object. JavaScript doesn't know that this button exists. So we're going to create an object representing it. There's a constant that we're paying attention to named whatever, which is inside of the document. And we further say get element by ID. Now, the confusing part as a beginner, this has got to be spelled a very specific way. We have get, lowercase. We have element, uppercase. By, uppercase. And then ID, only uppercase I, not ID. Everyone would think app, capital ID, but that's not right, unfortunately. And that's going to be a mistake everyone makes as a beginner. Parentheses, semicolon. Okay, this looks familiar. We've got an object.method with something in the quotes or parentheses here. But this is a little different. This is new because we are making our own object. We're inventing our own object in JavaScript. Quotes. The ID of the button right here, btn click me. Can I show both at once? Right there, barely. So in the world of the HTML, I've got a button that has been uniquely identified. BTN click me. That button has a name. Then in JavaScript, we're going to say, let's create an object representing that. We can call it whatever we want. This is an element. BTN click me. It's equal to. Now, when mine goes to the next line, that's just because my screen is big and it, and it does word wrap. You can put a space there if you want, but I would just leave it on one line. It's just that mine cuts off because the text is bigger. But we're saying this JavaScript object is made from, basically, looking inside of the document and getting some element by its ID. Well, which ID? The one of btn click me. So now what we've done here is JavaScript will know about the button. It's kind of a long line. But now JavaScript knows that a button exists in the, um, in the HTML world. We're going to then say, Um, LBTN click me dot add event listener parentheses. So we're using again the syntax of there's some object. We're going to do a command on that object. This is an object we invented. L button click me. LBTN click me. It's based on the HTML button with an ID. And we're saying add event listener. Oh, actually, our note here. Now, pay attention to a click. We have various events. There's the event of someone clicking something, double clicking, right clicking, dragging. There's the event of pretty advanced when your when your app is on a mobile device. A mobile device has um, a gyroscope and accelerometer. You know, if you move it around. That's an event happening. It can detect that you've moved your phone if you've pointed it north or south. So there are various events that we can listen for. I'm going to say quotes click. When JavaScript detects a click on that object, do something else. This one's a little special because then we need comma, one more parameter. After we detect the click, do something else. So the something else is going to be another kind of object known as a function. fn click me. Now pay attention to the click and then invoke really fancy term run a function. And then I'll explain what a function is in a moment. 
but writing it this way, it's like we're building little by little this concept. And then when it all comes together, it'll be amazing. You click a button and it does something. Now, this is going to be, you know, several lines of code to make it press a button to do something. And when you look at other apps, you know, I press this button right here and it shows me a preview of my, of my email. And I press here and it shows me my notifications. All of this has to be programmed. Right now, it's so easy that I, I double tap it to like a photo on Instagram. Well, that had to be programmed. Add event listener, double click. And it detected. You double clicked an image, so then add a, add a like to it. All of the interactivity that we do with software, like right here. If I click this minimize button in, in brackets, it was detecting a click. And then when the click happened, it shrunk my window. Or when it detected click on the, on the window down here and it pops back up, all of that's got to be programmed. It's not automatically that it knows. Everything has to be programmed. So here we're setting up, click a button, do something. <coughs> the something comes next over here. Define a function that does something. This is a little bit different than what we've written so far. Function, space, fn, click me, parentheses, curly braces. This doesn't quite look like we've looked at before. I don't see the dot and that sort of thing. But it's a little similar to this in that we're saying we're going to create a constant, some sort of object. Here we're going to create a function, which is a different kind of object. And this is the name of this. And here we will say alert, uh, window.alert, I mean. I'll make it say clicked. And semicolon. We'll pause here for it to work, to see if it works in a, in a moment. But here we're getting much more complex. And yes, JavaScript gets very complex very fast. It is a very complex language. Again, we're only going to do one week in this assignment. So um, if, you, if you're if you pulling your hair out this whole week, don't worry. You'll have more hair for next week because we're only going to do one week of this. And um, yeah, it can be very complex. But remember, we've got lab times at the end of the day, Mondays and Tuesdays. And then on Fridays, 12 noon to 3 p.m. I'm available through email. All of this is being recorded. This is in the readings. So what I want to do as a lecture is kind of throw a bunch of things at you and then you have the whole week until Sunday for you then to go through it again and then leisurely kind of learn the concepts. But all of this is to set up there's some sort of button with an ID. Let's pay attention to it. Specifically, when we click on the button that we're paying attention to, run a function, do a command. Uh, what's that command mean? We have to invent it. There's no such thing in JavaScript as function click me. There's a bunch of them built in, like get element or document or whatever, but we invented click me. This is the part where this can be called kitty cat. And if I say function kitty cat, it knows, okay, kitty cat means this, vice versa. And what it means is make a pop-up. You've seen this before. So again, these like little pieces, ingredients. This is just going to make a pop-up, but it could also play a sound. It could animate. It could do more than one thing. A function is basically a set of steps that we invent. So let's see if this works. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. Um, what I would also recommend before you run it is you open up your, your F12 console, your developer's console. Um, because over here, if there are errors, it, it, it should pop up to give you a little hint about what might have gone wrong. So in my case, when I loaded up my code, it just says the I'm a coder message. That's good. If it popped up with other errors, we'll, we'll pause to check that. Then I've got a button click me. If I click the button, I get a pop-up clicked. The pop-up doesn't happen until I click click me. So if you get a pop-up that says, click me, after clicking the button, it works. If you get a pop-up as soon as the browser loads up, it didn't work. 
it has to the pop-up has to happen after you click because now we have interactivity we have a button on screen uniquely identified we have the JavaScript constant to pay attention to it then we have the JavaScript event listener pay attention to a click run a function and the function is make a pop-up with that message so raise your hand if it worked how many of you click the button and it popped up and it worked okay good if it didn't let's take our first break it's just about two o'clock we'll take a break until 210 if it didn't quite work let's figure it out and at 210 we'll do a little bit more um, I'm also gonna put a copy of my code so far into the into the network folder in case you want to compare uh, have I mentioned that right here in the web design folder on the desktop uh, in our CIS 123 class I'm gonna put my code in there in a moment in case you want to look at my code compare your code let's take a break until 210